Okay, I'm sitting here on my on my crowded bench here. I have a lot of projects going on, but I thought I'd take a break and kind of go over um, the materials that I use when I'm bedding a stock and why I use them. Uh, for the most part, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, you know bedding materials out there, you know, specifically for it. And they're 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 all epoxy based. Some of them have you know fiberglass resins and and dyes so that you can match the color of your rifle. And to tell you the truth, I, I've never used those. I've always turned towards you know just a regular epoxy based uh, formulation, knowing that well, you know, I can I can still add dyes. I can you know pick the colors or whatever. If if you're into that, sometimes I just go on with it clear since it's going to be in the rifle anyway. That's personal personal preference, but uh, but as far as epoxy goes, um, I think the JB Weld is what I've used the most. Um, and this is the JB Quick. It, it dries a little quicker and it might not be as strong as the regular JB Weld, um, but it holds up on a rifle really well, uh, just like I just like I did on this Savage Axis. Um, I use the JD Quick and when you're mixing it and dries it, it's a gray color so it matched the stock pretty well. Uh, didn't have to do anything to it. And with the Quick Set, I chose that because uh, it starts to it starts to harden up and cure you know within you know five to ten minutes you know whichever one you choose. Uh, so you can prep everything, put on the epoxy, get everything set, and it's a quick job. Then it starts to dry out, and you can, you know, make sure it's pressed in, clean it off, and it makes a, you know, a good job, and it's fairly quick instead of waiting overnight uh, if you don't have the time. But uh, but a lot of times. Um, I also choose, uh, you know, I've used different brands, Loctite, Devcon, uh, this JB Weld, even Gorilla Glue. Uh, I've used all their stuff. And sometimes it's, you know, it comes out clear when you start mixing it. And like I said, you can always add a dye to it if you're trying to match, you know, a light wood, a dark wood, whatever. So when you're looking at epoxies, um, some guys, you know, there's, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there and they're showing you know what's the strongest epoxy out there what uh, you know and they're gonna base their decision on that like for instance this one says it's 2500 psi this one says 3450 psi and they're gonna base their decision on the strength or you know and that's fine and dandy but uh, you gotta figure a lot of those tests they're they're looking at the sheer strength and uh, of that epoxy how's it how's it gonna perform you know, holding two things together, right? Well, that's not what you're doing with with a rifle stock. Sure, you want it to uh, to hold on and adhere to your stock, but you have releasing agent and everything else on uh, on the rifle and all the metal parts so that it won't stick. So when you put everything together, it's under compression. So what you need to do, I mean, you just got to figure out that you know you're you're bedding the stock so it'll be a good uniform fit um, and the shear strength is really nothing to do with it unless you're looking around the recoil lug sure you're filling in gaps so the recoil lug will fit you know specifically in the slot and the recoil when it's you know recoiling back it's still under compression right you're, you're still not trying to hold anything together so that being said, when you're looking at, say, the stock I'm holding right here, it's it's this is the um, the Savage Axis stock, polymer, plastic, whatever. When you're trying to get it to stick to this, you got to remember also that with the plastic stock, plastic is petroleum based. So sometimes uh, it acts as its own releasing agent. You know, it might adhere for a while, but over time, you know, it could work its way loose, right? So if you're going to do that on a plastic, get get the epoxy that's specifically for plastics, plastic bonder. So so you're making sure that it's going to stick to the plastic. 
then you do the the regular thing where you're putting releasing agent on the on on your action and you know and then seed it in. So while I have this in hand, I'll go to the next thing that I do. Um, a lot of with these plastic stocks, uh, like this one, you know, I, I've put it through the ringer. I'm, I experiment with this one and you know test new stuff. Um, and I've had some stocks like the TC Compass stock, which well, it wasn't that bad, you know, if if I'm gonna you know go under harsh conditions and you know uh, I might keep one you know with uh, with the compass with the the factory stock you know one of these days I might have one and keep it you know um, and not upgrade the stock with this one it was very very uh, kinda weak you know you can really bend it around twist and torque it around and all that good stuff and a lot of guys, if you're going to keep it, you want to stiffen it up, right? And maybe add weight. Um, but what I do with this, if you take a close look, you see this clear stuff in here. This isn't your regular epoxy. What I use is uh, it's, it's a glaze coat. This is usually put like on bar tops, tables, and you know bars and and whatnot. Um, it's a glaze coating and it comes in two parts. It's like an epoxy based deal. This is a, a whole quart of it. Um, but you see you mix it up just like epoxy. Um, mix it up in a cup. And this stuff you can pour in. You can pour it into these cavities. And if you're going to do that you can see the little ribs going across that little truss pattern there. You know, between between the cavities, I got in here and roughed it up with a Dremel and drilled a hole through uh, through the rib so that when you're pouring it in, it kind of seeps through the hole and it lessens the chance that it's going to work its way loose and fall out. Since now the little hole it acts like a little retainer, um, but you can see. I left a couple of these open because I was still experimenting with this stock and I had some holes drilled through so I was still doing some work up here. But everywhere else I poured this stuff in um, and leave it level and let it dry. When this stuff is drying it puts out a lot of heat. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and it is a lot of fumes so you know have it well ventilated but, uh, but you can pour this stuff in, uh, let it heat up, let it dry and when it's dry you can see this is this is like leftover in the little paper cup the plastic cup I was I was pouring it in um, and it's just I mean, it's rock hard you know and it's sticking to it very well and it really really stiffened up the stock um, now it does add a little weight not much but I also used it um, on, on another guy's stock, I don't have it here, but uh, I put it in the butt stock also. These things are hollow. Uh, this one I tried foam. You can see it kind of leaking out, you know, that's, uh, that insulation uh, expanding foam. Didn't like it. I mean, it didn't really add that much to, to the stock. It was a lot of trouble. And uh, it quieted down a little bit, but it's still hollow and still, you know, hollow feeling. But on this other stock, I actually, you know, you can you can inject it through this little hole here, or you know, take your butt pad off and and pour this stuff into it. And what I did with his, um, I poured it in, not all the way full, but uh, you know, maybe a third, a half full, depends on how much weight you really want to put on it. And while it's drying, I just kept rotating it around so that it would uh, coat uh, the inside walls of this thing. So it still ended up in parts being hollow, um, but with it adhering to the sides, I mean, it really quieted it down, and it really added some weight. And what I did to uh, 
for the weight adjustment, I wanted this stock to be balanced, right, whenever I put the, the rifle on. And the rifle, it was a Savage Act. It was a heavy barrel, just, just like the one I have. So it's really, really front end heavy, right, because of that barrel. So I really filled his up in the rear with this stuff to add a little weight and kind of balance it out a little bit. So I added it here and then uh, stiffened up the front. And when it all went together, it was made a pretty big difference. You know, use a little bit of weight and the flex really, you know, really stiffened it up. There's some weak points, of course, you know, around this little part here um, where you might still get some some torquing going on but uh, but for the most part if you're gonna keep this stock that was a good cheap easy way to stiffen it up and balance it out so try it it was pretty cool I mean I just got this I forget at Home Depot or Lowe's uh, but it's a glaze coat really neat stuff um, the other stuff I use Um, is this stuff. It's epoxy sculpt. And I had a video covering how I customized this grip that you see here. So this stuff, it's you, you knead it together. You know, it has the, the stiffener and everything. You knead it together and, and it's like putty, right? And when you first start using it, it's real, really malleable where you can mold it and all that good stuff. Um, and after about an hour it starts to harden up and that's when you can really get the molding going on in whatever shape you want and and hold that shape uh, and it's epoxy base this stuff I just you know roughened up the wood sanded it down uh, to get any kind of finish off of it roughed it up molded this stuff on and it's been a, a year or over a year and it's really really holding well right so that's kind of the, the three things I use. Um, whatever epoxy you choose for the actual bedding, um, it's the, it's, and it's all in the density, right? I guess starting with this, it's just really porous and you can pour it into cracks or into holes and let it dry. Your regular epoxy is a little more dense. You can mix it up. Uh, apply it around and when you squeeze parts together you know it'll ooze out and you can clean off the excess uh, with this stuff it's even uh, more dense and and you physically mold it to, to what, what you want out of it um, now this you could possibly use on your actual bedding also but the amount you use is critical and the force applied when you're when you're seating in uh, the barrel and receiver into the stock, you really gotta you know have some force going down to get it to, to ooze out of the pores and then clean it off. So the amount you put on is pretty critical. You know, not enough, of course, it's not gonna uh, be a good bedding job. Too much, and a lot of it's gonna ooze out, and it's gonna be really hard to, to clamp them together. Uh, but it can be used, you know. Um, and that's it. Those those are my main uh, my main glues and chemicals or whatnot that I use um, when I'm considering, you know, bedding a stock or modifying a stock uh, or stiffening a stock. Um, and speaking of that, it's uh, where did I put it? The releasing agent I use, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of these kits that you buy, it's more of a, a liquid, and you apply it with a, a you know Q-tip or a sponge or whatever, and and you coat the metals and stuff with it, and that stuff works. Um, but that's another thing that I've personally I've never used. I've always just gotten wax, right, um, and. Some of it's just a, a neutral colored uh, shoe polishing wax, uh, kiwi wax, whatever. And I apply it to the metal parts. Um, it does a great job for a releasing agent. And when you're trying to clean it up, uh, it looks messy, but 
but it's kind of a uh, I guess a good indicator that it's clean once you get everything off you can see that it's all off if you miss a spot you can see the spot that you missed right so but that's what I do it's uh, and it's all due to porosity and what you're going to apply it towards so uh, pourable um, uh, a little more dense um, glue like for your epoxies and then uh, the higher dense density stuff for for molding but that's about it um, if you have any questions give me a shout